Hi guys, it's Lauren Daisy. Daisy. Welcome back to my channel. And today we are doing the Serena Vanderwoodson style deep dive that I mentioned in my Serena Vanderwoodson deep dive. <laughs> If you haven't seen that yet, please go and watch it. I'm very proud of that video. But today we're just gonna be focusing on her style specifically. So we're gonna be looking at fashion, makeup, and hair across all six seasons. And then at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how to get the Serena Vanderwoodson look. It is the look that I wore in my Serena Vanderwoodson deep dive. So I'm gonna show you kind of the hair that I did, how I did the makeup to resemble hers. Um, and just have a little bit of a chit chat more in depth about the hair and makeup. Whereas I guess, yeah, this season by season deep dive is definitely going to be more based on the fashion. But um, so yeah, I'll have chapters down below so you can skip to whichever season you want to. Or if you want to skip straight to the Serena tutorial, then you can do that as well. So I'm just going to give a quick little overview first. And then we're going to break down at season by season, getting more specific. I'm also going to show you kind of pictures for reference and things like that as well. Serena is obviously the it girl of Gossip Girl. From a fan perspective, I feel like Blair definitely becomes more of the main character. But even so, as the seasons go on, I think she's still always portrayed as that it girl and the one that, you know, more of the magazines in the mainstream world are more focused on, even if fans generally preferred Blair. And the creators of Gossip Girl really wanted the show to kind of be like its own tabloid in a way, like its own kind of fashion magazine that when people tuned into the show, they would be seeing current trends, current designers, um, everything like that. As the show went on, had loads and loads of people reaching out, wanting Serena to wear their clothes, wanting that kind of trend setter to be featured on such a popular show wearing their designs. And then fans from the show would obviously want to dress like them, would shop for those clothes and those brands. I do think it's kind of interesting how Serena was in the early seasons definitely portrayed as like the fashionista, um, despite not really trying so much with fashion. She was the socialite. She, you know, walked the runway. Um, in the later seasons, they are going to name a piece of like lingerie, kind of like nightwear after her, the Serena. Um, I think Blair mentions in season one or season two that Marc Jacobs designed a bag after her, you know, called the Serena. So she's very influential in the style world. But I do think it's interesting that she ends up having absolutely nothing to do with fashion and that Blair is actually the one who ultimately has the fashion line and people want to dress like her and all of her you know kind of minions dress like her and we don't really see any that emulated with Serena nobody really dresses like her or takes style tips from her so much in the actual show um it's more like outside of the show um fans of the show would want to kind of know what she was wearing and look to her to yeah see the latest trends whereas I feel like Blair has a different kind of feel. She has more of a unattainable feel. Whereas Serena is very much the girl next door, meant to be more relatable, even in a world that is so unrelatable for so many people. And I think her style, you know, we see her in jeans and we see her in more casual clothes. Whereas Blair is always extremely put together. She wears very like high fashion designer everything and even though Serena is the same all her clothes are definitely still going to be expensive in the same way that Blair's are but they're styled in a way that you can recreate them at a lower price point and you could still be inspired by her style whereas I think Blair is definitely more like put together by a stylist if that makes sense they're very unique pieces pieces that you wouldn't really find other than from that specific designer and she's always wearing Marc Jacobs or Gucci or Chanel very high class brands and they're not the kind of things you can replicate but because Serena's outfits even though they are expensive are easier to replicate I think that connects more with the audience and is much easier to kind of do a Serena outfit recreation than it is a Blair. I think you can definitely do Blair inspired outfits, but with Serena, you can get it more accurate to how it looked in the show. So firstly, we're going to talk about Serena's hair. And I feel like that's one of the most 
iconic things about Serena is her blonde hair. It's absolutely gorgeous. To this day, I don't think I've ever looked at a TV show character and wanted their hair more. It is always perfectly styled in that messy kind of, I just got up and it just looked like this um, kind of way. And I think it's so incredibly iconic, not just for fans of the show, but also in the show, there is a lot of pointing out, you know, Serena's blonde hair and they talk about it quite a few times um, and just kind of how radiant and glowy she is, kind of California girl energy while being a New York girl. This girl has it. She is warm like sunshine. She has fun. It is known for looking effortlessly flawless. Um, we see a few different hairstyles from her across the show, um, but usually it'll be like just down with some kind of effortless wave to it. That like beachy, yeah, like I said, California girl kind of vibe, um, which always looks really, really gorgeous. We don't really see many tight like curls from her um, or anything that looks really, really styled. It is definitely always more oh, she's just, she's just so attainable. She's just so girl next door. Um, a lot more, yeah, kind of like understated um, hair looks from her, but in that same breath, they always look perfect and absolutely gorgeous because that's kind of Serena's whole thing. She is um, effortlessly beautiful. Things just happen for her. Things just come to her. She doesn't have to try. Um, everyone just automatically thinks she's gorgeous. She just automatically gets kind of everything that she wants. And I think in a way that's kind of replicated in her style a lot. We also have, you know, her kind of signature updo, which is the, I've just thrown this together. You know, I just woke up very much Wattpad. I'll just throw my hair into a messy bun, um, except it's more of a messy ponytail. We see this a lot in season one, especially with her kind of school uniform as we go across the seasons those start to become a bit more refined as she starts to kind of mature and grow up. Serena's makeup kind of has a similar um, story to her hair where it's very understated in the early seasons but I think that's kind of in keeping with most of the characters aside from Jenny. I think Jenny definitely obviously has the most extreme makeup in the show but throughout a lot of the show we don't see a lot of intense makeup looks from anybody um so much aside from Jenny and Serena's definitely yeah more kind of understated makeup not really many bold eye looks or bold lip colors so much we kind of get yeah the occasional dark eyeliner look from her and we usually see a nude or a pink lip usually um, more of a kind of satin lipstick or a lip gloss. You know, we don't see a lot of really like bright orange in her makeup or red lips, things like that. I think we see maybe a couple throughout the show, but she tends to go for more cool tone looks, um, more like, yeah, very subtle cool tone pinks, um, silver, grey, with the exception of gold eyeshadow because, um, gold is kind of her... Um, signature colour. Um, I would definitely say gold is her signature colour, so we do see a bit of gold eyeshadow from her. She tends to go for more bronzy looks rather than blush look. We see a lot of bronzer from her. She's always got that kind of golden tan and golden glow. And then as we get into the later seasons, kind of like her hairstyles, her makeup matures a bit more. We see some more intense-ish eye looks from her. Still nothing super crazy, um, but just compared to the earlier seasons. And also we get a couple of darker lip colours from her, more like burgundies or darker yeah, kind of like autumn shades. Serena really expresses her kind of bubbly and carefree personality within her style. Um, I think the wardrobe department just did such an amazing job of using the character's clothes to really reflect them as people. And I think it teaches us a lot about them as well. For her more casual looks, um, more like every day, we see a lot of kind of boho style influence and we see warm color palettes and somewhat kind of like chaotic and less meticulously put together looks. And then for her bolder, more formal looks, she has very sexy style, 
bolder colours to make her stand out amongst the crowd. Everything she wears feels really effortless, like she has picked it out herself rather than been styled by somebody. I think her clothing always really reflects her. It looks like she herself went into her wardrobe and thought, what do I want to wear today? And without really thinking about it too much, just how she fell in that moment. The impact that style has on a character, I think is truly amazing. And we really see this in season five, because if you remember in season five, Blair gets caught up in a kind of scheme with Chuck to take down Diana. And when this happens, she misses her interview to go to Italy with Dan and she sends Serena in her place. And you really feel it when Serena is wearing Blair's clothes. It feels completely off. They don't match her energy at all. Yet Blair's clothes obviously fit her so perfectly. Seeing Serena in Blair's clothes, there's something about it that just feels off. It just doesn't work. And I think that's super interesting. I think it's the same when we see... We see Blair wearing Vanessa's clothes when she goes to the NYU party and she's trying to blend in. It just does not feel like Blair. It feels so out of character. I should follow her because I do not want her to steal on my other leggings. As I mentioned before, I definitely think that gold is Serena's signature color. It fits her to an absolute T. Gold symbolizes wealth and prestige. Gold medals are winner's medals and, you know, it's very eye-catching and alluring as well, which I think Serena's character definitely is and is how the writer of the books and also the TV show writers want her to feel. They want her to feel incredibly popular, very... Um, idolized by everyone on the Upper East Side. All the boys want to date her, all the girls want to be her. Gold is synonymous with royalty, which Serena definitely is on the Upper East Side. So now we're gonna look at season one specifically, which I think is a very important season in Serena's style because it was able to help set up her character um, in more of a show don't tell kind of way. They really tried to push in season one that despite being a part of the elite group of the Upper East Side, Serena is different. She dresses more understated than her other classmates and more casual. When she begins to date Dan, I think she leans more towards his color palette, which is browns and um, definitely, even though she tends to go for warmer colours anyway, there's less bright colours. She goes for stripes and the kinds of things that Dan wears, a lot of softer materials. A good amount of the time we see her in her school uniform and this is one of the best ways I think that Gossip Girl shows the differences between their main characters is through the school uniform. And I think that's still true with the Gossip Girl reboot. I talked about that in my Gossip Girl reboot season one uh, deep dive. They use how each different character styles their specific school uniform to express the differences between them. So with Serena, she appears to kind of throw things together at the last minute. She's always in a rush, always carefree. It's weird cardigans and ties and boots and things that you probably wouldn't put together, but she's just gotten up, she's thrown her hair in a ponytail and she's thought, right, okay, let's let's get going. I'm already running late. What do I want to wear today? Whereas Blair always looks put together like she planned it the night before. Chuck's tie is usually more relaxed. His top button will be undone to show that he doesn't really take school that seriously because he doesn't have to. While Dan usually will have his shirt fully buttoned. He'll have his tie nice and like done properly because he is naturally more studious and has to put the effort in and that reflects in how seriously he takes school even down to the dress code. Even in season one when they wear their hockey uniforms they do that classic technique of putting our protagonist or the good guy 
in blue and our antagonist or the villain in red. This kind of demonstrates who in that situation we are supposed to believe is the aggressor and who is more of the victim. For me, there are kind of three big iconic Serena outfits in season one. And in all of those, she is wearing gold. So firstly, we have when Dan goes to meet her for their date at the palace, she stood at the top of the stairs. It's one of my favorite scenes. I think it's so like beautifully shot and she's wearing her gold sequin top. She's also wearing a gold dress in the flashbacks with Nate where she sleeps with him at the Campbell Hotel. And then, or is it the Campbell wedding? I always get that confused. Is it the Campbell wedding or is it the Campbell Hotel? Anyway, you know, you know the scene that I'm talking about. And then lastly, obviously, potentially the most iconic Serena outfit of all time is her gold dress from Cotillion. She is wearing gold to show how desirable she is and how she is at the absolute top of the social hierarchy as well as kind of the um, wealth hierarchy. Even down to how they frame the shot with Dan being the one that is looking up at her, showing that she kind of has the power in that situation and she is the one that is the um, unattainable one. Especially in the first half of season one, we see her wear a lot more muted colours. Um, for example, at the brunch or when she speaks to Blair about sleeping with Nate, they're kind of trying to help her not draw attention to herself and show her innocence and naivety. Towards the end of the season, as Georgina is introduced as kind of Serena's sparring partner and her new big bad, as opposed to Blair, there have always been more frenemies, whereas Georgina is a definite enemy. We see Serena goes into a darker place emotionally. She wears darker colors and she wears a lot of heavier eyeliner. And we see this when she talks to Blair about the fact that she believes that she killed someone. In a way, I feel like she's almost mourning her um, resurgence. She's kind of mourning her new life that she has with Dan trying to better herself because now that Georgina is back, that's all kind of gonna go away. At least she believes anyway. <laughs> So now we're going to move on to season two and we start season two with her being split up from Dan and we start to see less of his color palette in her wardrobe and more of potentially how she would have dressed prior to leaving New York. We get a few flashbacks to the old Serena but we never really get to see truly how she dressed and how she was in New York. But I think the style we see in season two is more reminiscent of maybe what we would have seen from her if we could see more of that kind of time period. Like on Thanksgiving, she wears like the little like green short dress and we start to see more of those kind of influences um, come back in. As we start this season at the end of summer, we see a much more summery palette from her with orange, green, and purple being incorporated into her wardrobe more. Her looks start to have bolder colors than we were seeing in season one, and it's gearing it towards a more sexy style, especially when she's in her Revenge Against Dan, Queen Bee era um, in that kind of early season two. Her style also continues to parallel Blair's and show the differences between the two of them and showcase Serena's more free-spirited personality. Like when they go to visit Yale um, on that kind of like school trip, day out kind of thing, we see Blair obviously is very put together. She dresses very studious, whereas Serena has a definitely a more laid back kind of celebrity modern look where she's still wearing a blazer, but it's white and it's got purple stripes. She's got her jeans on, you know, it's definitely a more kind of um, it girl version of what someone would wear to a Yale um like visitation day. And later at that same party, you know, we know this is a very big deal. The Dean of Admissions, I think it is, or the Dean or the Board of Admissions, I can't remember, is gonna be there. There's lots of kind of high profile um, people in the Yale kind of, and just general education world, but she still dresses very Serena. She's got her cute little cocktail dress on. And obviously Blair is a lot more reserved and yeah, a lot more conservative kind of dressing at this event. 
um, whereas Serena is very happy to just be herself, dress how she always dresses. Yeah, not really overly trying to impress anybody, just genuinely being herself and feeling like if they're gonna like me, then they're gonna like me for me. And I'm not going to change who I am or how I dress to fit into that which I really like. And that's also something that I really loved about Jenny as well. I think when they just genuinely express themselves, that to me is just a really cool thing to see. We still see a lot of casual girl next door looks from her and her school uniform continues to mirror her more laid back approach and attitude. We do get some really gorgeous formal looks from her this season as well. And of course we get moments with her signature color gold as always. In terms of her hair and makeup, we don't really see any kind of change from season one. It's still her loose, um, flowing blonde hair and the kind of same updos that we were seeing, um, which I really like because I think it is consistent with Serena's high school self. And we kind of only start to see changes as she gets older and comes out of high school. So I really like the consistency there in the first two seasons. <laughs> So now we're going into season three. And again, in season three, we see um, more bold colors from Serena. We've got a lot of vibrant looks from her. However, we do see quite a bit more black in her wardrobe than we've seen before. And she often wears black when she wants to be perceived as more mature. We see her wear more mature looks, especially during her relationship with the older man, Trip. In this season, we see her trying to figure out what she wants to do with her life more career-wise and education-wise, rather than just kind of being forced into high school. We see her decide that maybe she doesn't want to go to Brown and she postpones that for a year. She tries a few different jobs and we see her kind of trying to figure out who she is um, more in that professional world. And because of that, we see her dress less teenage, kind of coming away from things like jeans and more casual t-shirts and leaning more into dresses and professional looking pieces. Her makeup has kind of started to mature also, not so much. Um, like glossy lips or, you know, anything that could be considered, I guess, kind of teenage. Um, we see more, um, even though it's just like thin, like eyeliner from her. Yeah, I don't know how to explain it. Her makeup just feels a lot more like going to work makeup or there's a bit more effort put into her makeup. Whereas in the first seasons, it definitely felt a lot more. This is just something she could do herself, just mascara, um, a bit of bronzer and some lipstick very, yeah, kind of teenage and very easy to do, um, not very intricate, whereas this feels more like she's trying to present herself in a more adult way and more mature, you know, put more effort into the makeup. There's a lot more kind of a routine going on, um, kind of showing that graduation out of high school into her adult life. Her signature kind of messy ponytail also goes through this change and we see it become slightly neater or it's swapped out for more of a slicked back um, updo, kind of like buns and ponytails, things like that. But it's definitely, again, a lot more styled and all around she appears more put together in this season. <laughs> Moving into season four, this is a very turbulent season for Serena to say the least, which sees a quite stark contrast in her style throughout. In the beginning, she and Blair are in Paris, so, you know, they're attending Columbia together and everything is very bright and hopeful. So we see bright colours, summery colours, and because she starts the season single, a lot of her looks are really cute and flirty, you know, cute skirts and summery dresses and um, shorts and those kinds of um, little elements. We then see some bolder, sexier looks from her when she's in her situationships with Dan and Colin, more floor length dresses, a kind of mature, um, sexier vibe than her kind of cute, flirty cocktail dresses from seasons one and two. Ooh, that dress is not fair. <laughs> then, as we kind of progress into the second half of the season, after she's struggled with the Juliet storyline and her overdose, her style becomes incredibly understated with a very muted colour palette. 
And even when she reconnects with Ben and starts to fall in love again, her palette remains more neutral and warm. Um, Similarly to how it was in season one when she was dating Dan, another character who is perceived as more down to earth and normal than the elite group. I think that kind of mirrors... I think Serena definitely mirrors the person that she is seeing also. We see her style, but then it's kind of like Kourtney Kardashian. You know, Kourtney Kardashian always dresses like her boyfriends. Serena's not so extreme with that, but I think it's definitely reflected. So in season one, when she's with Dan, we see, you know, cardigans, like I mentioned, and browns and more of a casual style. And then again with Aaron Rose that's kind of brought in again then when she starts dating trip we see more mature looks from her more kind of like office wear kind of trying to match his age group a bit more then when you know she's with nate we're kind of back to that upper east side cute flirty more like season two and the flashbacks kind um of style from her and then now in season four back with Ben and Dan, we're seeing again more understated, more down-to-earth, casual looks from her. I feel like that was a complete ramble. I hope you understood what I meant. (laughs) So then in season five, we see Serena struggling with her self-image more than ever. I talked a lot about this in the Serena Vanderwoodson deep dive, but I think Serena definitely struggles with who she is as a person and she never struggles with confidence she's always had confidence she's very you know she knows that she's beautiful and she you know all this kind of stuff um which i like i said is a very polar opposite to blair who i think lacks in self-confidence and self-esteem sometimes but is always 100 percent sure of who she is she knows that she's blair waldorf and she's a bad bitch and whereas serena i think struggles with who she is i think that stems from Um, not really knowing her father. I think that stems from Lily trying to constantly put her into a box and tell her who she is, as well as the pressure of the Upper East Side and being on Gossip Girl all the time and people kind of assuming they know who she is, like with the slut shaming that she experiences and kind of, you know, no one ever really, aside from Dan, gets to see her for who she believes that she is. And I think when she stops seeing Dan and is separated from him, she continues to just not really know who she is and kind of where she's going in life. And that's definitely um, prevalent in season five with her relationships, her friendships and her career and just kind of life in general. And I think her style in this season reflects that so she has a more subtle style she opts for a lot of beiges browns and creams as well as cardigans and an all-round softer materials there's not a lot of kind of i don't really know there's not a lot of like intense looks from her we've kind of gone away from the shirts the blazers um the like designer dresses um how she was kind of in season three and four And now we're kind of going into, yeah, back to more casual look. She's not really putting in that same effort Um, in terms of her fashion. I think it's a lot more low key and she's less confident in kind of bigger style choices. It's a lot more subdued. Her hair is also back to the more casual, unstyled, yet flawless look that we know and love from her. We do see some more intense looks from her, but they're kind of few and far between. Um, If we do see any bolder looks from her, they're usually of a darker colour palette um, to reflect her going into a darker place emotionally. When she becomes Gossip Girl in season five, which by the way, is one of my favourite storylines in Gossip Girl. I thought it was so fun. Um... But when she does become Gossip Girl, she kind of detaches from everyone in her life, really. Dan and Blair are busy in their relationship, and Nate is busy running his empire at The Spectator. Lily is consumed by her rivalry with Ivy. And for the first time, no one is really solely focused on Serena. And I feel like this reflects her style. She's definitely blending in more, becoming more understated, and... The show, not only does the show not revolve around her anymore, but there aren't really any characters in the show that are solely focused 
on her or, um, you know, giving her all their attention. She kind of fades a little bit into the back. And especially because she's being Gossip Girl, she isn't really on Gossip Girl anymore. So she's not out at these lavish parties and things where she can wear these bolder looks. She's inside and she's with her laptop and just more kind of detached from everything, which doesn't um, need a big bold style to go along with it. Even her signature gold color takes a backseat this season um, as she struggles with no longer being the it girl. And obviously Lola kind of tries to come to the forefront and then that reignites something in Serena and she realizes that she wants to be the it girl. She gets Gossip Girl taken away from her and she's kind of forced into this really dark place where she loses absolutely everybody that she cared about and ends up hurting everybody. And um, I think that is truly kind of her lowest point across the six seasons. So her style is definitely in a much darker um, place at the very, very end of season five. So now we're on to the final season, season six. And at the start of season six, Serena has completely reinvented herself away from the Upper East Side. So obviously, as we know, at the end of season five, she has destroyed her friendship with Blair, destroyed her friendship or, you know, chances of relationship with Dan. She's just completely kind of burnt every bridge. So she goes away and, yeah, kind of reinvents herself. She starts dating Stephen. And while she's with him, she presents herself as much more grown up. And she's got this really glamorous style that I think feels less like her. We see a lot of, I don't know, it's interesting because we see a lot of more like, yeah, like floor length dresses from her and things, which we do see from Serena a couple of times in the show, but they just feel completely different, like not geared towards her style or her color palette at all, um, which I think is really interesting. And I think, like I said, with the other love interests in the show, she's kind of trying to reflect Stephen's prestige and his business and everything. She definitely tries to fit the mold of who she thinks um, kind of Stephen's public eye wife. Stephen's public eye wife? That doesn't make sense. Stephen's kind of like public image girlfriend wife would look like, would act. And I think that definitely reflects in the outfits that she goes for while she's dating him. But it feels less like her and more like who she kind of wants to be or thinks that she should be when she's with Stephen. Once they've broken up, we start to see Serena's personal style come back into her wardrobe more. Um, she has some really stunning dresses throughout these final episodes that are absolutely gorgeous. And then when she starts to reconnect with Dan, we see elements of her season one style coming back in, but it's elevated to fit in with this final season and where obviously fashion was at that time because we're looking at completely different. Season one, Serena was obviously in 2007 and season six, Serena is now in 2012. So... I think they've got elements of her style and how she did dress in season one, especially now that she's back with Dan, but it's brought more into like the modern fashion scene of that time. So it still feels like her, but it's just a little bit more elevated to the age she is now and the year that the show is in now. It's definitely closer to her kind of bubbly, go with the flow character traits. And the things that I think we really miss out on in those middle seasons, which I think is a real shame. I'm not gonna talk about it too much because I really talked about it in my Serena deep dive, but I think the bubbly, cute Serena we meet in season one is definitely not who we get three, seasons three, four, and five. And I did really like that towards the end of season six, we start to get her back a little bit more. And I think her fashion definitely mirrors that as well. To go along with this more adult style, she also has some more like slick back ponytails and some darker lip shades as well to kind of complement those more mature formal looks, especially, I kind of always think of the one in the Revengers when they're like kind of going after Bart. She always look, she looks really, glamorous then um but it's really like understated look you know she just got a ponytail she's got the darker lip and the dress and i think that's definitely kind of a season one two serena look but brought into this more mature and sure of herself serena i truly believe 
because I've seen I've seen many a wedding on these shows. Okay, I've seen many a wedding, and I usually I'm not huge on the wedding dresses. I can't lie. I don't know. Maybe I'm just very picky about wedding dresses, but I've never really seen a lot of wedding dresses in these kinds of shows where I'm like, oh, that is so them. Like that is perfect. That is gorgeous. That is so them. But I think Gossip Girl did it incredibly well. And Serena's wedding dress. Oh my God. It's not what I personally would wear, but I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And it is her. Like it is just her in a dress. I can't even explain it. Like it is just perfectly captures her character. The gold resembling her cotillion dress and everything you know I've mentioned about the significance of gold to her character it's big it's extravagant a real center of attention dress and again her hair is up but with the pieces kind of effortlessly framing her face you know they just like fall out like she's kind of just done it herself I think that the makeup the hair the dress everything about that was so perfectly Serena and it was the perfect kind of final look to see her in because it is her in Cotill uh, Cotillion season one, but just brought to this more mature and just wonderful place and, you know, more modern with that time. And I just, I absolutely love it. I think it's absolute perfection. So now let's move right along into the tutorial on how to get the Serena Vanderwoodson hair and makeup. So for Serena's hair, I decided obviously to go for her classic kind of curly wavy hair um, that she does. It's kind of a real beachy boho look. So I went for overnight curls. Um, I know that you can do them in a lot of different ways. For me personally, my friend Kenny makes um, overnight curl like little kits. Um, with things that she hand makes herself. Um, it's called Hun Hair. I'll put the username there if you wanted to go and buy these exact ones. Um, otherwise, I know that a lot of people do the robe curls. Or you can buy like the things where you curl your hair around. I do really want to try those. Um, but just for the minute, this is what I'm working with. So we're going to take them out probably brush them out um, because these are the smallest ones. So it's probably going to be more like kind of ringlet curls sort of um just a bit of a tighter curl than we're looking for but for me my hair is really thick um so I find that if I don't use a smaller kind of curl or a curling wand that the curl just will not stay in my hair like I have tried to use like um curls um curling irons with a bigger barrel but my hair, it just will not hold the curl, which is so annoying because I love the way that those um, bigger curling irons like make your hair look. But for me, it's just not possible. So this is how my hair looks just as I have taken it out. So you can see that it's very much um, one of the more of a kind of spiral curl that I just don't really know. I think I could probably get a sort of similar look with a chopstick um, curling iron if I took like a big section like this. Um, but because my hair is quite long, I have to do it almost in sections. Like I would probably have to do half and then half. Um, and I'm also trying to use less heat on my hair recently. So I am much preferring overnight curls. Also, I don't know if other people get this same thing, but for me, curling my hair, curling my hair takes an absolute eternity. Um, curling my hair takes so long. It's really um, time consuming. So it will literally, no joke, take me probably about an hour, probably more, um, depending on the kind of like look that I'm going for, to curl my hair with a curling iron. Um, Whereas this takes me probably about 15 minutes um, to like put into my hair and then I can literally just wear it around the house, go to sleep in it and then it is done and dusted in the morning, which is really nice. Um, I also feel like Serena would, she'd be down for the overnight curls, do you know what I mean? Like Serena's whole... <laughs> 
and part of her whole look is that you know she's on the go she gets up for school and is always late or is rushing around um not putting in the kind of like meticulous effort that say like Blair does so I feel like I feel like she'd be all about overnight curls you know okay so for me I'd like to do these look so freaking cute <laughs> um I like to do six sections so three on either side again just because my hair is thick I find that if I do bigger sections it just doesn't hold the curl as well or for as long so we've got to do we've got to do more but that's okay So basically how these work um, is, yeah, my friend Kenny, she just sews them herself and you wrap the hair um, round and round and round and then you just pin it. Um, I She gives you these really cute little clips to do it with, but I cannot find them for the life of me. They must be in a makeup bag somewhere. So I've been using butterfly clips, which are not fun <laughs> to sleep in. Um, but, you know... We do, we do what we must. You don't have to do this, I don't think, but I like to tie the sections with a hairband just because my hair is just, there's a lot of it going on. So I feel like I have better control over it when it's tied up in this pony rather than just trying to take the section as it is. I feel like these look a little crazy at the minute, like a lot more, a lot more like ringlety than Serena would have. I'm going with my tangle teaser. I just have the one with the handle because I just find it so much easier, especially because of my long hair. I just kind of just like literally, no joke, just kind of mess around with it. Like, <laughs> like what is this? I don't know. But I find like weirdly it makes the sections like connect like all like joined together it's probably utter bullshit i feel like half of like me doing my hair and makeup is just completely just whatever feels right you know and then i literally just like shake that out do you know what i mean like why did that do anything but like low-key it kind of did so then this is gonna be tricky because i'm like sitting on my bed but um then i will tip my head forward and like shake the curls out I just like give them a bit of a zhuzh it's been like doing my own hair for years um same with like makeup it's purely just like from life experience not any kind of professional training that reminds me of that you know when Jennifer Coolidge is in Friends and she's like I don't even have any professional dance training <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> if no one knows what I'm talking about, that's going to be so embarrassing. Okay, if you wanted to, you could add, yeah, hairspray, you could add um, sea salt spray, you could add, like, um, volumizing powder to the top um, as well if you wanted to, to get a bit more kind of, like, volume up here. Again, it'll probably like drop out more throughout the day and then it'll look more like hers towards the end of the day. Serena does do a kind of messy pony that you could go for as well. It's very, the way that the sun is coming in the window right now is actually doing me no favours. Like not even a little bit. Like what is this? Like are you serious? Anyway, so the way that Serena like does her messy pony, it's obviously perfectly curated by whoever is doing her hair, but how they make it seem is that she's literally just thrown it up into one. So she's usually got it as like a mid pony. We never really see her do like high, high ponies. It's always like a middle pony sometimes a low pony um so kind of like this kind of thing she never really has it so that all of the hair looks like it's really been like brushed um back she usually has it so that you can still see the parting it definitely looks more natural that way like you've literally just thrown it up like this um 
which I think looks really nice as well with the curls. Yeah, Serena usually goes with, like, you can see the parting, or even if you can't, it just looks very much like she's just run her fingers through it, thrown it into a pony, and she's ready to go. Whereas I feel like when Blair does an updo, it is so much it is so much more polished. You can tell it's been brushed, it's been hairsprayed down, there's no flyaways, nothing like that. So if you're going to go for the Serena kind of pony, then you're going to want like, I would say probably anywhere from like midway to like a low kind of pony. She never really does high, high ponies on like the top of her head. It's just not I don't know, it's just not really a style she goes for. She doesn't tend to experiment too much with her hair. We see, yeah, this kind of classic messy pony. We see it just kind of down like this, just kind of all over the place. Um, rarely do we see it like, sometimes we see it pin straight, but like hardly ever. I feel like in the pilot, maybe like kind of in her Columbia, you know, trying to be more mature days. Um, but usually it's just got loads of volume. Um, we see a curl most of the time or at least like some kind of wave. And sometimes she'll do it where she has like her hair like normal, but then it's like just these bits just like pinned back. Or I think she's even had like a claw clip in before. So like very easy looks, nothing too kind of complicated. So they'll give her a like say a medium like ponytail just like this yep just super easy super basic then they'll take a piece like this they will wrap it around where the hairband is so i don't know if you can see that from all the way back there even if i zoom in it might be a bit hard to see but they'll usually use um, a piece of her hair to wrap around to completely hide where that hair bubble is. I guess it just maybe looks a bit more kind of professional, I don't really know. Do I have a single bobby pin? How has this happened? So yeah, that is what I would call the Serena Amanda Woodson kind of like messy pony. It's really nice with the curls because I feel like you get a lot of volume and it's a lot more defined. And I actually think even just doing the little like the little bit with the wrapping the hair around. Again, just makes it feel more sleek. It just makes it feel a bit more like, you know, you just put a little bit more effort in. Like not loads, but just a little bit. And that was how to get Serena Vander Woodson's hair and kind of just how she does it a little bit. <laughs> like the kind of the kind of looks that she generally tends to go for. We're going to move on to Serena Vander Woodson's makeup. Serena's makeup is usually very neutral. Um, she has a couple of bold looks throughout the show, and if she is going to go bold, it's usually going to be with an eyeliner. Um, which I hate eyeliner. <laughs> I hate eyeliner. I can't do it. So I'm not going to do eyeliner today, but I am going to do one of her more neutral bronzy looks. So I do have an inspo picture that I will put up right here. Also, in terms of nail polish, I've noticed that Serena hardly ever wears nail polish. If she does, it'll be like a silvery or a white kind of color. But all in all, she doesn't wear it too much. I don't know if that's like an acting thing if it is then someone let me know because i'd really i'd be really interested to know because like even in friends and stuff i've noticed rachel never really wears nail polish neither does phoebe or monica um and blair also doesn't really tend to wear nail polish but in pretty little lies they wear a lot of nail polish <laughs> um they've got some iconic nail polish looks in that show um but gossip girl seems like not so much except for maybe jenny but i haven't really haven't really taken notice but yeah so i just kind of went with just neutral nails because that seems to be what she wears most of the time i feel like serena's look is super like i don't know kind of what they would classify even though she's from new york as kind of like a california girl you know she's got the blonde hair the like tan skin she's very glowy and her makeup usually kind of reflects that so it's more bronzy so yeah serena tends to go for a lot more bronzy warmer kind of tones so for foundation i'm using the essence fresh and fit foundation 
Yeah, I feel like Serena's very glowy, but it's definitely more in like a tan, bronzy kind of way, right? Whereas Blair is glowy in more of a dewy kind of way. Her foundation is very glowy, very your skin, but better kind of vibes. Um, I feel like there's more highlighter there and stuff like that, whereas Serena has more of a kind of bronze glow. So a bit more heavy, you know, with the bronzer, less blush, um, very warm tones. Serena is also usually quite matte. Her makeup is pretty well set. Then I'm gonna use my Essence Healthy Glow just to kind of go over any blemishes and dark circles. Serena's makeup usually is quite matte, but for me personally, I don't use setting powder. I don't even own one. Um, it just makes my skin super dry. So I will be skipping that step, but I do feel like that is definitely one that she would follow. Then I have this palette here, which I got from Colourpop ages ago. Today I'm going to be using these two shades here. The blushes were all in collaboration with Kathleen Lights, I'm pretty sure. And then the bronzers were just ones that were on the Colourpop website anyway, so I don't think those are limited edition. Same with the um, highlighter, I think that was just a standard Colourpop one as well. But yeah, so we're going to go in with a warm toned bronzer just to kind of warm up around the temple. For me, this is like really different to makeup that I usually do as well because I don't typically do bronzer. Just kind of up around the forehead, all around the temple and I bring it right down here as well. It's super loose, like there's no like harsh contour, baking, any kind of thing like that. It's very much just like a natural kind of glow. And I'm just going to add a tiny bit down my neck as well. Just kind of following that natural line. So then I'm going to go in with this pink shade. Actually, I thought I was going to use this orange one, but I think I'm going to stick with this pink one um, because it has a really like warm undertone. And also it has like little flecks of gold in it, which are really pretty. And I think they kind of fit more of the inspo picture that I have. So yeah, like I said, Serena doesn't wear a load of blush. It is literally just very much right on the like apples of her cheek, just right there. <laughs> like, which looks a little bit interesting, but you have to remember, these are the, the these are the like late 2000s, early 2010s. Serena doesn't really do any kind of like blinding highlight. Like I said, even though she's got that kind of like inner glow, it definitely comes more from bronzer and a tan rather than um, any kind of highlighter. Also, I feel like I look crazy. Like I look fine in real life. But I think the camera is making this bronzer look really heavy when it's not. And also I don't like match my neck. For the eyes, I'm using a Kathleen palette that she made with Colourpop. Um, and I don't really remember the name of this one. But the shades that I'm going to use are pretty universal. So you don't have to have this palette to do them. We're first going to go in with this kind of pale shade just to completely coat the lid. Serena has almost like a tiny bit of highlight, but it's matte. So I assume that they just put a lighter shade like on her brow bone. So yeah, we're taking that right up to underneath the eyebrow. So then you're going to want a really warm brown shade. And I'm going to go in with this one at the end. It's almost like a kind of coppery color all in the crease leaving a little bit of space like where we put that lighter brow bone shade. Literally no eyeshadow or just like a little wash of colour like this and some mascara would pretty much complete the everyday Serena Vanderwoodson kind of look. But I am going to add a little smudge of this darker brown just along the lash line. 
just kind of bringing that into the very outer bit of the crease. Then I'm going to take this gold shimmer shade here. You could literally take any kind of warm gold and pop that directly on the lid, not going up any higher than that. I'm just going to go back over that crease just a tiny bit. No kind of like under eye shadow or anything like that. And then I'm going to use this Spectrum Dark Matter Mascara. And I'm going to curl my lashes as well. Serena probably does have her eyebrows filled in. I would just guess with like a pencil or maybe a bit of eyebrow gel. But for me, I don't fill my eyebrows in. So I'm just going to brush them. There seems to be like maybe the tiniest bit of inner corner highlight. So I'm going to take this shade here and tap that ever so slightly on the inner corner. Then we're going to do top lashes and bottom lashes. Serena tends to go for like more of an intense lash. Like sometimes it's a little bit clumpy, it's a bit thicker. Just kind of like wiggling the mascara wand, trying to get as much product on there as possible. Then for the lip, in this specific picture, she's got quite a like pink glossy lip on. I find that Serena tends to go for a more neutral lip. Um, she does wear a couple of bold lips throughout the show. If she does, then it's usually a kind of burgundy or maroon, maybe a red. Um, other than that, she goes for like um, really like nudey pinks or a gloss or a neutral kind of, yeah, pinky nude kind of colour. I feel like we have a few good options. So we actually have the Lottie London Gossip Girl collaboration. I feel like the lip gloss from that is a really good option. Um, the lipstick from that, eight letters, is also quite a good option. It's just kind of a nude. Then I have a couple others. So I have Barry M um, Undiscovered, I think is a really nice Serena kind of shade. Then I also have What's Your Sign by Colourpop, and that's definitely more of a true nude, more of a cool tone. And then lastly, I have Cake, which is a Revolution one, which is a collaboration with Soph. I'm going to go with the Soph one today. This is one of my all-time favourite lipsticks. It's literally so worn down. Okay, so that is the finished Serena look with the hair and the makeup. So to kind of conclude this video, for me, Serena has always felt more current to me, like for the time that this show came out, more like people would have been um, seen wearing in magazines and, you know, on celebrities compared to Blair's designer old money kind of vibe. Not only was Serena intended to be an it girl in Gossip Girl, but I think she became a real life it girl beyond the show and is still to this day. I saw a TikTok the other day where someone was talking about how crazy it is to be friends with like a New York 10. So like, you know, a beautiful um, girl in New York and like the comments were all like I immediately thought of Serena Van Der Woodson and I think that is so true she's like the epitome of a New York 10 of the girl next door she's just she's just everything people looked to this show for the newest trends the newest styles and designers and brands brands wanted their clothes to be shown on this show they wanted them to be worn by Blake Lively as Serena and I absolutely cannot blame them Blake herself has also become a fashion icon in her own right since the ending of the show I mean her Met Gala looks that that lady never misses I love her I absolutely adore Blake Lively with all my heart and I absolutely adore Sunshine Barbie Serena Van Der Woodson with all my heart as well as much as obviously Blake has become a kind of fashion icon in her own right since the show ended the way that people modeled themselves on Serena and look to her for the latest trends will just always be so cool to me we still see it now with shows like Euphoria completely changing the makeup landscape when it came out or Stranger Things kind of rebooting that 80s retro style 
but I just love how perfectly 2000s Gossip Girl is. And seeing Blake Lively's, you know, latest Serena look in a magazine article or as a picture cut out on someone's 2009 inspo board just brings me so much nostalgia and joy. So that is it for today's video. Please let me know in the comments what you thought. Are you, uh, you know, was Serena your style icon as well? Or did you kind of resonate with somebody else? This is kind of a new series that I'm going to be starting on this show alongside my deep dive. So if I do a deep dive on somebody, it's more likely than not they're also going to get one of these more in-depth style videos as well. Let me know kind of who you want to see next. I actually posted a poll. Um, so if, you know, you ever want to have your say, I usually will post a poll on my community tab. So kind of check there, keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, on which character I should do for my next deep dive. And I had the options as Ari Montgomery, Blair Waldorf, Monica Geller, and Alex Russo, because I wanted to let one of my brunette girlies shine, okay? And they're my absolute faves. So Monica ended up getting 8% of the votes. Alex Russo got 16% of the votes. Ari Montgomery got 17% of the votes. And Blair Waldorf got 60% of the votes. So, as decided by you, the next character deep dive will be on Blair Waldorf, which means you will also be getting a style video just like this. Um, but let me know who you want to see after that, because I definitely want to do more shows and I want to do um, some different characters. So, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'm sorry that the uploads have been kind of sparse lately. I've been doing a lot of like traveling and things and I haven't had time to sit down and edit these videos take a very long time from like the researching and the scripting to filming them and then to editing them as well but um you guys have been really loving them so I'm hoping to get some more out more frequently to you um and yeah and also I just wanted to say I've been struggling to like reply to comments and stuff lately because I've been so busy but I do see them all and I absolutely love them and I love reading them and just thank you to absolutely everyone who has subscribed to my channel and like you know well from like the long time subscribers but also like recently it's kind of taken off a bit more which is just so exciting for me and I'm glad you guys love the videos and your comments are always so sweet and I absolutely love reading them. Um, so yeah, make sure you like and comment and subscribe and yeah, love you all very much. See you in my next video. Bye.